So, we all know that Ferrari really threw away its championship potential this season, despite an incredible start to this new year. But how is it possible that the Maranello team got so bad in the second half of the season that Mercedes outscored them every race? They literally didn't have a car able to finish inside of the points in every race, and now they were able to get a win and six podiums after the summer break? Well, in this video, we're going to be looking at all the possible reasons for why this sudden performance drop happened, and listen to what drivers think about the situation, because things are going to get spicy real quick. So, let's begin. It's common knowledge that Ferrari hasn't been the most competitive or winning team on the grid for quite some time now, almost since the end of the Schumacher era. They were really fast in 2019, but it was all thanks to their engine, which used some dark areas of the sporting regulations to gain an advantage which is the reason why the red team was able to get a few wins during that season. But when the FIA found out, the two had to work together to fix the regulations. So that unfair advantage was being brought away from Ferrari, and the team struggled over the next years to get back to the level they once had. Supposedly, they were given a penalty right in the engine department, which meant they became a lot slower than they were. Then, since in 2022 new car philosophies were introduced, they were able to get back to the first step of the podium. Well, at least for a few races. Despite starting out the season strong, fighting for the win in every single race, their performance had a sudden drop just about in summer. But why did this drop happen in the first place? Well, we don't know for sure, but we can easily get some conclusions. The most probable one is probably the one that we often tend to skip. Let's set a point in which Red Bull was evidently better than Ferrari, and where the two teams were really far apart in pure race performance. In my opinion, the point would be the Belgian Grand Prix in August, and for the first time that season, Ferrari's inability to win wasn't caused by them having the wrong setup, grid penalties or bad strategy. We have to look for the reason elsewhere, since the same problem was brought over to all of the other subsequent races. What was introduced in Spa this season? Well, if you thought that gravel was put at the exit of some corners for cars to safely crash into, well, you're wrong. I mean, not technically, but I don't know why you would guess that. It was in that race that the FIA introduced the Technical Directive 039-22, TD39 for short. That is a technical regulation which states that Formula 1 cars are allowed to have a maximum vertical oscillation. This was done as requested by many teams, especially Mercedes, to help against porpoising, as it was evidently worsening the driver's health by exposing them to constant bouncing, which can lead to back problems. In reality, this was done mostly because the teams hoped that it would slow down Red Bull which was already taking an advantage in car performance, leaving everybody else to struggle. At the end, what happened was all teams took a step backwards in car performance and speed, while Red Bull kept on getting better like nothing new was done to the rules. Since during this race Ferrari was left to struggle for pure pace on track positions, we can assume that it was due to this new rule. But wait, because we can do more than just assume. In fact, if you compare the audio taken on Friday on the F175 during free practice when vertical oscillation isn't recorded and the cars are free to roam around like they want, we can hear the Ferrari bouncing up and down, touching the ground a lot of times while still being incredibly fast around the circuit. In fact, this is the reason why Ferrari is so competitive in Friday before races. Since this rule seems to disappear when not enforced, Ferrari is usually the fastest around any circuit in free practice when they can use the car to full potential, without having to stiffen the suspension and modify the geometry. And this means a faster car, because as you know, when racing with stiffer suspension, it usually goes with less grip throughout corners, bumpy rides on the straights, and most importantly during the actual race, a lot of tyre wear, since the rubber doesn't adhere to the asphalt properly. So, is it all because of porpoising? Well, no, not really. Matteo Bonotto, now Ferrari's last team principal we know, since it isn't clear who he's going to be replaced with, in an interview some time ago stated that this isn't the real problem, and that there's something fishier going on in the background. He has said that there have been some modifications to the car's flaws to respect the TD39, that's true. But I will keep on saying that's not the reason why we lost our competitiveness since Hungary came before Belgium. What he's talking about is the fact that Ferrari stopped fighting for the championship a long time ago before the TD39 regulation, taking Hungary as an example. If you don't remember, while Leclerc was having great race pace and while he was comfortably leading the race, he was called into the pits by the team inside of the pits to put on some new hard tyres. This was probably one of the dumbest moves in racing history. Seeing this scene from the outside looked like a circus. 
They put on these tyres, which by the way were known to be slow as other teams tried to use them but failed to be as fast as they expected. Then he did some laps and then the team realised they'd put the wrong rubber on the car. So naturally, they pitted him again for soft tyres, making Leclerc finish P5 in a race he was leading and had all the advantage in the world in, since his championship rival was starting P10. Now, after remembering this situation, I don't feel like giving the blame to something before Spa. In Hungary, Leclerc had the pace needed to win the race, and his car was really competitive, even though the team kept saying that it wasn't. Getting a strategy so wrong is neither the car's nor the regulation's fault, but it's all because of some strategists hired off the side of the road. But let's hear what else this Bonotto guy had to say. In Hungary, we had already lost our brightness. It isn't the TD39 that influenced our performance, but rather Red Bull's ability to develop their car. We couldn't find the same level of competitiveness they had, but when talking about the rest of the grid, we kept our position. So let me get this straight. He blames Red Bull for doing their job, I guess. This is absolutely ridiculous. As a team principal, you should acknowledge your team's mistakes and how you can get better, not blame it on the other team for working harder and being better. I'm glad that he will no longer be a team principal. Even though a small part of me will miss these nonsense interviews, he has always said that Mercedes was less competitive than Ferrari. But what he doesn't realise is that the Maranello team was safe during the second half of the season just because they had gained a massive advantage when they were still trying to win something. During the final rounds, Mercedes got incredibly close to them, and at least they managed to win a race after the summer break, contrary to them. But what do Ferrari drivers think? After all, it's them driving and struggling with their own team. After the Singapore Grand Prix, which was well after Hungary, Leclerc said to the media that it's clear that the car is there, the drivers, we're there. We just need to keep improving the execution and whenever we have the opportunities, nail them. This sounds a lot different to what Bonotto said when he was explaining about how the car is uncompetitive. And I think I can trust the driver more who is actually the one with his hands on the steering wheel than the team principal who has probably never driven a car before in his life. Seeing what the other drivers think, Carlos Sainz had also said that I think the team has done a very good job on strategy this year. I still believe at Ferrari we get super criticised for things that other teams might be going through also in their pit stop windows. This is probably good news for them, which now knows it has two drivers devoted to just making the best out of every race for the team, which is something really good considering the situation they're in right now. I mean, I don't think the drivers like this too much though. Rumours say that Leclerc has been offered a contract renewal, but he's taking some time to decide whether he wants to stay there or not. But we've already made a video about that. Let us know in the comment below what you think of this situation. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Bye for now.